Hello, dear friends. It's Poet WP here again. Um, looking through uh, my archives, and um, I found one I'd like to share with you. A poem. This is a poem about death. Death. Uh, <laughs> such a grim topic, right? Isn't that the uh, only thing really any of us truly ponder? We sit around and ponder all the other things to distract ourselves from the big pondering of that. <laughs> Some would say that. I don't know. It's one point of view. Um, but this poem, although it, the theme of it, at least part of the theme of it is death, it's not in like a negative or bad way. It's kind of like a uh, warm-up to the possibility of it not being... Such a horrifying experience. That's kind of the point I'm trying to make. Like, like you shouldn't fear something that's a natural part of life. Kind of thing. Anyway, enough describing the poem. Let's hear it. It's called... Oh, yeah, and this is one of the poems... I don't care if, if anybody really cares. This is one I wrote probably, I don't know, 2005. This is one of the, one of the ones I used to run around New York City and read at the open mics. A lot back in the day. Anyway. That that fateful day. <clears throat> Exercise your livelihood with a clear head. Extend your selfhood beyond your own internal nature. A becoming must never cease to become. It's our hope to cheat death. Death is the last transformation of this stage. Death ushers us away like a sleeping family in a bomb raid. Death, the messenger of fate. Death, existing within the principles of irony. Consent your gray beliefs to the acceptance of an impermanent world. The confined, loathsome agonies of life's conditions are extinguished and reborn Moment to moment. That's one of the things that... This poem, to me, was an expression of how I got a more healthier outlook on the concept of death, the nature of death. I mean, hell, after all, we're all going to face it. You know? Because Buddhism helped me with that a lot. Uh, to gain a greater perspective, a more healthier perspective of dying and death. Also, I took a whole long few courses in college about old age dying and death and uh, counseling the elderly. So, you know, as I, I'm a sociologist, and, um, but I, I was like one credit away from being a social worker as well. So, I'm, you know, given a lot of thought to these concepts. But... Buddhism, for me, really opened my mind to, like, the way we learn about it in the West, death seems so final, so consequentially just, like, because, you know, you're not supposed to believe in reincarnation or whatever, but there's, like, scientific proof that reincarnation is real. Look it up. There's kids born that remember their names, where they used to live. They remember how to fly airplanes. They remember who murdered them. And then there's a case, I think it was in India, a kid remembered remembered his name, he remembered his daughter's, his wife's name, his, his family's name. He remembered where he lived. He remembered where his store was. He remembered who killed him. And he went back to the place. And then he, the police went and talked to the guy who the kid said killed him in his previous life. And the guy confessed. The guy and the kid knew where things were hidden in the house that only he and the man's wife knew. I mean, this is, these are confirmed cases. I mean, I study this kind of stuff. But, yeah, reincarnation is real. But, anyway, I, I'm, 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 I could get into a whole discourse that could last an hour about this. But anyway, that's not why you tuned in. You tuned in to read, to hear this poem. So, 
yeah, thank you for joining me. And uh, I'll be sharing more poetry with you and more thoughts. Like I said, I got a lot of poetry that's a lot of, a lot of, got some teeth. It's not all smiles and rainbows. Uh, in these turbulent times, I'm very reluctant to even read much of those, even though they have a purpose. Catharsis and learning from and all that. But here and there, I'll do a little salt and pepper mix of uh, some of my sorrowful stuff. Maybe that'll help some people too, you know. Catharsis is important. I, myself, am a firm believer in catharsis. That's why I love metal music and horror movies. You can watch a horror movie and you can be like, man, as crappy as my life is, it sure ain't as bad as these people have it on this horror movie. My God. <laughs> That's kind of the way I look at it. <laughs> you listen to metal music, Nine Inch Nails. That's not really metal. That's industrial or Metallica. That's mainstream metal. But, you know, and you get it out. You get it out. You got to deal with those energies. You can't keep them all bottled up. If you don't, If you don't get it out, your frustration and your anger and your confusion and your whatever, all that negative stuff. If you don't get it out, express it. Headbang to some metal music. Do some shadow boxing in midair. You know, cuss up a storm. Whatever. Whatever you got to do, you got to let that shit out. Then you got to get perspective on it and be like, yeah, okay. It, it's done now. I, it's, I let it, it exercise itself, if you will. You know? And then you come back to the piece and you see, you see that, yeah, that was kind of stupid. And, you know, I felt that, I let it out, and um, I learned from it. And, yeah, it wasn't right. Yeah, I got carried away with my anger. Uh, but just don't direct it towards people. Go do it privately if you have to. Do your anger. Or write something. Or paint something or whatever. Do whatever like that, you know. But if you bottle up your anger and you never deal with it and you never acknowledge it and you, all your negative stuff, then it goes into your subconscious and then it pushes out into your conscious actions and then you do impulsive, fucked up, like crazy shit. Probably, people probably criticize me because I cuss, but this is just my way. It's just, it's just my way. You do crazy, impulsive stuff. You know, because you didn't, you didn't let that energy out. You, you denied it. And so it just burst out of you in a destructive way through an impulse. Boom, boom. That's how it happens. If you don't deal with your shit, it'll come back and it'll bite you in the ass. So, it's important to, to uh, balance the positive and the negative. Because we all feel it. But act on the positive. Learn from the negative and act on the positive. And learn, of course, learn from the positive. Don't act on the negative if you can. I mean, we all slip up, make mistakes. Hell, I do it damn near every week. Make a mistake, go back, you apologize, you acknowledge, yeah, that was not right. And you, uh, you know, you get back on the horse, and you head on down the divine path once again. That's how, that's how we do it. We're humans. So uh, anyway, and I'm rambling once again. Thank you for joining me, and uh, I'll catch you next time.